From Kamloops we drove straight back to Alberta to the Sarsi Reserve. We passed through Banff National Park and the other national parks we went through on the way over. We arrived at the Sarsi Reserve at Blueberry Hill late that evening. They had a teepee set up for us so we wouldn't have to set our own up. It's the one behind our truck. Here are some of the camp scenes that took place while we were there. This herd of buffalo belongs to the Sarsi Nation. They occasionally butcher a buffalo for feast, also for sacred bundle feasts, and distribution among tribal members. This is Jackie Crowchild picking out a younger buffalo that he is going to shoot so that we can demonstrate how to cut it up with obsidian and flint tools and also the various uses of different parts of the buffalo. Shortly before this buffalo was killed, some Sarshi elders came up and asked that we save the blood for them. They also wanted the intestines. Jackie Crowchild spoke for the stomach. We didn't waste anything on this buffalo at all. We used everything possibly that we could to show how the Indians used everything on animals in the old days. This is an obsidian knife being examined by the kids. This is one of two knives that was used to skin the buffalo. We also had two flint knives. This is a flake from an obsidian rock that was also used. Yeah, right. Do I have a tail? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> that works for your camera. This is good. Move! <laughs> This is the belly fat being dried to be eaten later. <laughs> they like the smell! I think it got punctured. <laughs> this is the stomach after the food inside had been removed. Here the buffalo is being quartered with a flint rock. That looks fun. Mm -hmm. block you up. Hi, mommy. Hi, mommy. 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 How do you know I was here? Here the sinew is being removed on the left and the tenderloin on the right. <laughs> Just put it around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> These are the tools that were used for 
the skinning and boning of the buffalo. This is a hide being stretched out for drying so they can be tanned later. Here Drina is demonstrating how liver is roasted directly on the coals. In the old days, liver was either roasted this way or eaten raw. It is difficult to dry liver. When liver is roasted it only develops a small burnt crust on the outside. The inside retains all its juices and it's much more delicious this way than frying it. Indians also didn't have frying pans so it wasn't that easy to fry liver. This shows the liver after it's been cooked and it's been sliced in pieces. You can see how delicious the centers look and how small of an area was burnt. These are the buffalo brains and the spinal cord that are being dried to be used for tanning later. This is the buffalo sinew being dried in the trees. Here the girls are cutting the meat up to be made into jerky. They're using an obsidian knife for this purpose. This is Violet Crowchild cutting up the meat for jerky. Since we had a shortage of flint knives and obsidian knives, she's using one of her own knives in this process. She done a great share of the cutting up during the survival camp. Here I'm demonstrating a sinew backed wooden bow that I made. It has a sinew string on it. I explain how I made my own glue using hide. This is a very powerful bowl. This is a mountain sheep horn bowl with sinew attached on both sides. This is a recurve bowl. The string goes on the opposite side from the curve. These are two quivers that Darina tanned and made, one on the left buckskin, the second one otter and mountain lion that she tanned and quilled, arrows that are being straightened, an elk horn bow that is being straightened, two wooden bows, a mountain sheep horn bow, and a stone axe used for fighting and cutting. I also demonstrated how obsidian and flint knives were made by using a stone tool to strike off the flakes. I also showed how the smaller arrowheads were made. There goes my point. Uh oh, I knew it. I heard people were complaining that the Morton O' girls were making everything too serious around here teaching all these old time ways. I bet somebody wanted to have a better thrill on Blueberry Hill. There goes Mike McGinnis, Chief of Police, hauling them off. I bet it was that darn ghetto blaster trio. 
Yep, there they are doing some real cutting up. I found my thrill. This is a meat drying rack where the buffalo meat was hung to dry. A small smoldering fire is made beneath it to give it a smoke flavor. Many of the northern tribes like the smoked flavor. This elder is Louise Big Plume. She is supervising the drying of the buffalo meat. She has had many years of such experience. Here Drina is demonstrating how sinew was prepared. She's unraveling it after it has been dried. Now she was separating some small pieces from it. She's going to make thread so that she can demonstrate porcupine quill work. She has to put it in her mouth to get it wet. Once it's wet, then she places it on her knee and rolls it. This twists it, and when it dries, the twist stays in it, and you have your thread. She also ties a knot in it. Here she's using the bone awl to show how the Indians uh, sewed in the old days when they didn't have the modern steel needles. The sinew is stiff enough that it can be poked with the buckskin itself. This is, these are some quill stitches that she demonstrated while at this survival camp, solely done with sinew. These are some blueberries and some porcupine quills that are being dyed. This is a pot of pine gum that was used to fasten the stone knives and the handles, and this is a buffalo's tongue being boiled. Nothing was wasted on this buffalo. These are the quills after they have been dyed. Making a bomb flyer. Oh, In the evening, the elders told the children the bedtime stories or Indian legends. Sky, it's a, um, real thing. He had a flat. He had a flat. He saw the houses, the closest house. And then he walked to them and yeah. nobody was home. Wow. No one was home, so, so he checked in the barn. Checked the barn. <laughs> checked the barns and um, he go, there's nothing in there. And then he Check went to the next barn. barn. And then he saw a green thing in there. And then he touched it, and it wiggled, and then he, then that guy jumped got, over the fence. He got so no. scared. No, <laughs> he, he was going, and then he ran away, and then he goes maybe, and then that green thing started to follow him. He goes maybe if I go across the river, he will. No, maybe if I go across the fence, he will stop following me. And then he went across the fence. That green thing. And here, um, Kelly. Keeps on going. Like, uh, you like he's the still engine. following me. And then like here he goes, um, um, put it down. Maybe if I go across the river, he'll stop following me. So he ran, jumped across. This is a little, um, the lake, sort of. And so, <coughs> yeah, he walked across. And then green thing. And then that guy, he goes, he went to this one house. Yeah! Up like that, that green thing. Okay, you're in. Give me that! Give me that! <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday evening, Clay Big Plume killed a moose on the reserve and brought it into camp a little after midnight. It was quite cold, and here the moose can be seen being skinned and cut apart to be dried and cooked the following morning. This is the moose head. The nose itself was removed later and cooked on the coals. Moose nose is a delicacy among the Canadian Indians. This is Clay Big 
from posing before the moose he killed. Heavy? Before we left the survival camp to go to the Morley powwow, an Eskimo type tug of war was performed. Everybody born in the winter was on the north side and everybody born in the summer was on the south side. The people on the south side won, which meant we would have a long summer.